Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh Bo Bridger, I had to start a little bit early. I had to start early today for one very, very specific reason. I was wrong. I was wrong. And you know, on YouTube, I know there are a lot of people who don't like to admit that they may have been wrong in certain sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people like to go back and pull receipts and everything like that. Well, not over here, not at Brand versus the Man. I am willing to admit when I am wrong. And the reason why I'm willing to admit when I am and have been wrong is because it's very easy to go back and be like, well, wait a minute. I remember you saying this and mm -hmm. I remember you saying that. And one of the things I said constantly, constantly was... I don't think the Thunderbolts is actually going to happen. Well, yep. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. This doesn't mean it's going to be good, though. I mean, I mean, we don't have to go that far. I mean, just because it's I happening. was. I, look, I was out of it. Whether it's been here on Brand versus the Man, whether it's been on the movie Monday Movie Night Madness, whether it's been on ISO Cubes, I think even on Nerdy Film Girls Channel, I've said I don't think it's happening. I never thought Thunderbolts was going to happen. I thought that was going to be something that they were just going to like keep announcing, keep announcing, but it would stay in development hell. But no, Florence, nope. fresh off of Dune 2, here with her nice little Yelena and her mm -hmm. whole get up and everything. Like it's yeah. happening. Um, it, it changes my entire thought process. Now, now you and me played this back last year. We talked about, well, what would it take? How drastic and how sudden would changes have to be? Well, this movie got a brand new writer less than 30 days ago and they're filming today. Yeah. Yes. That's drastic. That's changes. That is a response to a lot of things. And that's why I think Captain America four, if it comes out and it's a great movie, it's not the movie that was seen last year by test audiences. It's a whole new thing. And I don't know. I don't know. I just think things are moving very quickly to try to like write the ship. Uh, but I mean, you had every reason to doubt that it was getting made. They didn't even have a writer for the new script until they, a month. They ago. had nothing. It's really a lot of this has been. And I hate to use the word rush because we use that a lot when it comes to Disney. But a lot of it was like rushed. And I was kind of like, all right, well, there's just no way. But, you know, here it is. Uh, going into it, one of the big things was uh, the combat-ready costume is a bit different than the mostly white ensemble that we saw her have in Black Widow, which, you know, obviously. And it's pretty similar to the Thunderbolts concept art. But I, that's the thing. It was that concept art where I was just like, eh, it just doesn't look correct. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> doesn't absolutely. Look doesn't look correct. Um, but here she is. Multiple, yeah. multiple pictures. I, you know, she says I shouldn't be doing this. I guarantee you that Marvel and Disney is trying to push this though. They want this. They, they're, they're desperate to get back in the news in the media in a positive way. I think we're about to get flooded with Deadpool Wolverine stuff. I think we're about to get absolutely yeah, I agree. overwhelmed. I, I could see starting in May, just, uh, just overwhelming amounts of information coming out interviews. They, they're going to try to hype this up. They care about that week one box office. I think more than they've ever cared because of, of what it's going to mean. I agree with that completely. And actually, I wanted to pull up here our oh, third that? musketeer of Nerdy Film Girl watching. Appreciate you, Nerdy Film Girl. Uh, Nerdy Film Girl saying that Florence Pugh, she does tend to choose good projects, which is true. And for the most part, this is after Dune 2. And so you do kind of wonder. Now that mm -hmm. like a little bit of the profile has been skyrocketed a little bit where it's like, all right, well, yeah. we know oh, who she is yeah. and she's been out there. Why not? Right. I, I, um, I could understand that. Uh, timing is everything. And mindless meat. I think you brought it up. The, the vote is coming up for the board seats. Mm. I think that they're, we're getting another Deadpool trailer before that vote. I, I would be shocked if we you don't. Think so? I, I think because I think even they recognize that there's more they could do. And I don't know. I, I would just be shocked if we don't get a lot of stuff like a lot exa example being, I think that that week we got the Pedro Pascal news and then we got the alien Romulus trailer. And then we, mm. you know, everything just started. Yeah. Disney is unleashing everything. And I know you're going to talk about this later. They moved up a huge thing that we talked about on this stream last week. And we were like, it's going to happen. But like, when was the thing? And I said, I had heard that it was getting moved up to the fall. 
They just did yeah. it. Like, like they already started it today. I, I mean, oh, we're up. we're gonna get into it. That it, it's it yeah. it doesn't end here. But uh, as we as we go, mm-hmm. we got to say hello to the people. Tell yes, we started ten minutes early, so just wanted to get off the ground. And honestly, that Thunderbolts news, I just found that out about twenty minutes ago. So I was just kind of like, oh my god, <laughs> just yeah. wanted to get that out there. Yep, I was wrong. I thought that hey. We might have a good chance of this not happening. And no, they are saying it absolutely is happening. But in other news, welcome to Brand versus the Man. Going to talk three very specific things that Bone Bridger and Nerdy Film Girl and I have been talking about for months. One of those things being Disney and Hulu's merger, which Bone Bridger just alluded to, happened today, essentially, officially. And going right. into all of that. Going to talk yeah. about the Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, this has been one of my favorites. Oh. The Pirates of the Caribbean, once again, having another thought process of having a reboot. See what happens there. And the absolute most ridiculous, but we also knew this was going to happen. And for those of you who played the game, you know what's going to happen. And for those of you who haven't, <sighs> well, good, get ready for it. Pedro. Pedro's done filming for The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. And there, now... I, I, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, there's, there was a lot of back and forth over it. And you could tell the people saying, oh, no, he's not done yet and everything. The people commenting were like, have you played the game? Do you yeah. know? And they're, they're like, no, no, I didn't play the game. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, And you know what? I was wrong about something there, too. And we're going to get into it. But first, let's get into the chat here. I always got to show who the first person is. And it's usually between one of two people. This time... Gabo, Lorga Bucks came in first, asking where Chad was. Real Chad, how's it going? You two are usually the first two in here every single time, so I appreciate you for sure. And then as we get down here, because y'all always have a good conversation going. Mindless Meat, good of you to show up. Nerdy Film Girl, I appreciate you as well. And also, Nerdy Film Girl, please let us know how your stream went yesterday. And if you haven't, go to her channel to check that out. Oh, man. There's there's a lot. There's a lot going on. A lot going on here. Our Banyol, how's it going? Ferruccio, how's it going? Good to see you. Brock Samsonite. Um, Bone Bridger, well, as I go through here, because we're going to start with Disney and Hulu, and, and there's a lot here. Do you have currently Disney or Hulu? Do you have the, oh, yeah. the bundle? I'm rocking it all right now. Got, got, got all the bad stuff. Got all the, you know, just so that I can, like, say that, like, I'm, you know, I because I talk so much about streaming, yeah. I I gotta suffer. I got something for you that happened to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what happened. Oh man, uh, Mr. Know It All, how's it going? Cryptic Beats, good to see you. Glad everybody's showing up. Dan Yeager, good to see you. Tim Vernon, appreciate you showing up. Pedro Pascal, we are definitely gonna be talking some major stuff today. Um, here, here, here's something I have to tell you. Now, I went to leave Disney, and when I went to leave Disney, I was able to get a a, a bit of a deal. But that deal wasn't from Disney. That was just from the provider who I was basically able to get it from, which means they probably paid for it and then kind of extended the discount to me. I'm kind of curious now how Disney is going to do discounts specifically now that that merger is complete i don't know if that's going to be a thing that happens anymore right because they claim that they're going to try to turn a profit by november if they turn a profit yes. on disney plus they're going to have to stop giving deals they are going to have yeah. to make sure those price things go through uh india the hop star thing they've got a that yeah. mess has got to be cleaned up it's not a profitable market uh, one day maybe sure yeah. um but yeah i don't know i i could see that though you're spot on about one thing though. They are cutting costs. They mm-hmm. are doing this bundle. And the reason they're doing it is there's more stuff on Hulu that's new and there's nothing on Disney plus. So you've got to have that content yeah. on Disney plus and you got to make glad it. One you, thing. I'm glad you said that because look, if you look at Hulu and, and if I turn on Hulu, this was the top page, but this is a Disney mm-hmm. plus screen here, but uh, mm-hmm. Shogun right at the top getting critical rave reviews all over the place. If you haven't seen Shogun, check it out. If if you're one of those who likes to wait and kind of binge the season, I understand that as well. It is well worth your time. It is a great show. And Disney is looking at that and going, 
oh, yeah, there's nothing on our platform that we produced in TV format that even comes close to the quality of something like a Shogun. That's just that. That's not including all of the stuff Hulu has where they mm -hmm. get certain shows that work really well, certain things that people just go on Hulu to watch instead of going on like ABC or network television, like The Bear, like Abbott Elementary, like Master Chef, and right. things along those lines. That doesn't include their little Halloween lineup that Hulu does every year that actually brings in viewers. Like people will, will right. sign up for Hulu just for October. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Hulu's, they've been the app. They've been the better yeah. app. And I think Disney was just like, and you've talked about it plenty of times. We have to do something. We have to take it. And we need to make it prominent enough where it's not confusing, but also make sure that everybody knows that we're, this is us. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, their dream is they just want you to like, they just want it all to be on Disney plus. They don't want yeah. to have the Hulu name be a thing. And yeah. that's the dream scenario because they realized, uh, you know, last fall when they bought the rest of Hulu, we knew this was going to happen because years ago, Hulu was growing and Disney plus was not like mm -hmm. uh, Disney plus was getting subscribers, but they weren't paid subscribers. They were gifted right. out. Hulu was straight up growing with paid subscribers. Like it was an yeah. actual growing platform, growing, growing uh, platform. But you know who won in this scenario? And I know it's going to... Universal got straight cash for this deal. You, yes, Universal yeah. streaming platform could lose money for a decade off of this the money they just cashed in on this. They don't have to even... Because Universal is like $9 million a day on Peacock. Well, it doesn't matter yes. with how much they just got on this. <laughs> but they had to do something. They had, had to, to do something. Because Disney was really starting to bleed money, especially when it comes to their Disney Plus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it just wasn't doing well. This might be the best thing they have. I mean, they had the yeah. Fox stuff, but without Hulu, the Fox stuff wasn't doing much for them. That That's kind right. of the irony in that Fox deal. The Fox deal was $70 billion, but it didn't actually help Disney the way they thought it would, especially Avatar you know 2. One of my favorite things about Avatar 2 was the licensing was already done. So, like, it was on Warner Brothers before it was on Disney+. Plus. One of the top two highest grossing movies of all time, if it's not number one. It might be number one now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it literally was on Warner Brothers. So you paid, yeah, correct. you had to yeah. get this whole different, I don't know. That's This Hulu thing is important. I don't like it from a, a viewer perspective because I'm worried that now Disney has changed leadership. So now these Hulu 20th Century Fox searchlight, all that stuff in the Fox division used to be in its own thing. And Disney just, you know, profit of it. Now Disney's really reaching out and saying, we want our people in each division. This is the right. new leadership. It could change things. It could make that it content could. like Shogun. We may never get that kind of show again. Maybe, or maybe they realize we have to get that kind of show. Or they learn. Or they, you learn. know, uh, there's yeah. one. There's a specific thing that happened too, because you you mentioned that they moved it up, and and it was kind of a, a major surprise that they moved it up, and there was a specific thing that happened. And I think I know, and you probably do as well, that specific thing. And I'm I'm gonna switch to it in just a second, but before we do. Ty Mal, how's it going? Prom EL, glad you guys could show up. Hey, Aaronites, I appreciate you. Sir Grizzle, I did start a little bit early today. Uh, there's this thing that happened, and we talked about it. We talked about it on ISO Cubes not too long ago, actually. And it was this. <laughs> now, if yeah. you remember, 1.3 yeah. million subscribers from the from that price hike and then had a streaming loss that that I mean, the losses were crazy in 2023. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's absolutely. Kind of like, and and that's with cuts and stuff getting mm -hmm. deleted and taken off. But we know part of the problem is some of the shows had too big of budgets. That's definitely an issue. So they can, they, they have to pull back on that. But the other right. issue is what they're talking about here is the core subscribers for Disney. A lot of those are on deals. I think my first Disney Plus deal, I paid like six bucks for like a year. Like it was something stupid because mm -hmm. it was like day one deal or something like verizon i don't know somebody at Comcast my first was 299 oh 299 yeah, was no. my first deal and those when those expired a lot of people weren't watching so like why would you right. keep it and especially in the age of like netflix raises their prices because they can and because the content is overwhelming in terms of how much stuff is on there and how much is coming out and everything like that agreed uh, yeah this is this is interesting because this is with cuts included. Now, this year has a lot more cuts. Like, there's a lot of stuff that they just took off the balance sheet and said, oh, we're not doing this 
this is not making you know happening but still Agreed. yeah you, you're a legacy media company and you can't figure it out like can't figure it out and so you have something like this uh real chad with the ten dollar super chat appreciate you as always hulu could really compete with netflix because it has a good library plus the benefit of the current tv stuff Yes. And and Mindless Meat saying that Hulu uh, should have been a primary over Disney Plus. And I think a lot of people kind of have oh, that thought process. a lot of people. Yeah. Fox, yeah. the catalog, the stuff. Absolutely. And honestly, I think that maybe Disney, where they messed up is they waited too long to buy Hulu. And Agreed. that was a mistake because because now we're a little ingrained and a lot of people are finding out. A lot of people aren't like us on YouTube and everything. And they're finding out that Disney owns Hulu because they're logging into the app like that's how they're yep. finding out like and i think it will have an impact it, it, it will definitely have some sort of impact i agree i agree with that nerdy film girl kind of adding in that initially disney plus was it was yeah, cheap too, it was very cheap. cheap it was it wasn't uncommon to get it for a 2.99 a 4.99 a 6.99 deal it wasn't uncommon to get it with your phone subscription your internet subscription for like a whole year free like that was not uncommon at all. And now I think, I think that's done. I don't think that happens again. I really don't. Uh, yeah. D Marcel, how's it going? D Marcel, I actually started 10 minutes early uh, talking about the Thunderbolts. Here's right. my Very quick thoughts to... for those of you. Yeah. For those of you who weren't in when I opened up talking about Thunderbolts, I was wrong. Thunderbolts is happening. I'm happy it's happening. I also don't know what's supposed to happen with that because right. real quick, real quick, if I can just, if I can just turn your attention to this paragraph real quick. He would be joined by Thunderbolts, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Valentina Allegra, Seinfeld, if you don't know, David Harbour, Red Guardian, Hana, John Kamen, Ghost, Wyatt Russell's U.S. agent, Olga, Olga Kurilenko's Taskmaster, and Sebastian Stan's Bucky Barnes. Now, outside of Bucky, who's the pull? I honestly think... They're going to try to do a silly movie. Like if I was just betting because Taskmaster. What, what, what are you going to do? Oh, wait, I don't are know. Are they going to introduce these characters like they never existed? Because that, that would be a smart move. Is they if they pretend that no one knows who Taskmaster is, no one knows who Ghost is. I, like I understand that they're all stars. I'm just saying from a general audience Knowing the hero, oh, who's the pull? Yeah, I don't know who is the pull outside of Sebastian Stan being Bucky. Um, obviously, David Harbour is a big is a big name. And it's like, yeah, but is is he gonna pull as Red Guard? You know, what I'm saying? like I, I always kind of wonder about those kinds of things. It's interesting. But going right. back to the Disney Plus Hulu merger, so you look at some of the stuff they have here. Uh, but this quote here stuck out to me. Most, but not all, of the Hulu library is coming to Disney Plus. Good idea, bad idea. I, I, my bet is there's some licensing problems where right. long-term contracts. But th I think it's a combination of the desperation they can't wait till that stuff expires, so they're going to mm -hmm. start doing what they can. Which th this is why I think this is kind of telling. Is this wasn't supposed to happen until the fall? It's being done in a way where it's going to be gradual, which I don't think that's a, the worst plan is to be gradual, but maybe they have to wait longer in general, or maybe they don't want certain things on there. Now we know it's not a poor things is on Disney plus, right? So it's yes. not like they're trying to keep Disney plus family friendly on the general page. The, you, you can't put stuff like that on there and say, we're trying to like, you don't exclude this thing, and but you let poor things on just because of the awards, right? Or do you? <laughs> Yeah, see, that's the thing. I don't know if there's a plan in place. When you're just right. getting something started like this, maybe you do. Yeah, hey, you, you I, know. I would argue that like someone like Max, they have a great catalog and they rotate some of their good stuff to keep it fresh. They yeah. needed to remove some of their bad stuff. There's some stuff that's not worth keeping. Like Disney Plus, uh, Disney for all their credit, removing Willow was the right decision. You don't want someone showing up to Disney plus new and experiencing that show and being like, this isn't worth it. And right. Canceling. Like it's, it, it's your product. You need to have your face. Like it needs to be good. Um, like I would even argue max is, has a problem. They, they have pretty good categories, but you don't want a bunch of junk. Like, don't let me yeah. make like, show me matrix or the rings. Like, like just show me the, the uh, epic stuff, you know? 
Yeah. Um, uh, Logan Bucks also adding in a very important detail here that we can't skip over. It's not a two way street. Uh, Disney no. Plus stuff is not coming to Hulu because they Hulu's, want it all. It, yeah. Yeah. They want it all on theirs. Hulu still will have, for the time being at least, Hulu's still going to have its own separate app. That's still going to happen. But it's the fact that Disney's not throwing theirs unless they want something to get a little bit more viewership like they did with mm -hmm. uh miss marvel or Andor or stuff like that then they might mm -hmm. kind of do that plan but for the most part uh no it is not a two-way street so so uh gabo is very very much correct there uh shinta glad you can come through scottish geek guy also glad you can make it uh mindless me they need a good first impression agreed like they, this needs to work really well but here's the thing and this is a good paragraph here because it also in introduces or at least acknowledges the ESPN thing. So, yes, Hulu is just a tile, but that tile also seems to represent something bigger inside of Disney. The full Disney plusification of everything as the tech and strategy it built over the last few years percolates out to, to everything else Disney does. We know the tech is good, but the product hasn't been good. And so wow. that's where it kind of gets interesting. And so they say they zoomed out and took a very long-term approach. Aaron LaBerge, president and CTO of Disney Entertainment and ESPN, we're going to be running a streaming service forever. So they recognize the thought process of where everything is going and how they need to continue on that path. But really, though, you're talking about a Disney Plus that hasn't done well and has maintained a lot of losses. You're talking about an ESPN that very few people really care. Here's a good question for you and for the chat. If you took away barbershops, nurses, or like doctor's offices, dental offices, things like that, like things that would have a TV that needs to be on, maybe like retail stores and things like that. If you took all of that away, and you asked ESPN to show us your core audience of people who aren't in those particular things. Right. How many do you think it would be? I don't think oh, it would they be don't that want high. that. <laughs> no, I don't think, John, I have a new theory. They can't even sell ESPN if they don't get some major sports contracts tied up. Like, like without the yeah. viewership of like games, they have to have like college football. That's why they have to pay so much because without yeah. it, it's nothing because the daytime programming, the daily programming without the, it's nothing. It's like, and we all know this. It's inevitable that these things are coming to streaming. Like, like it's yeah. absolutely inevitable. Uh, we saw that March madness people, you can watch it on HBO max. Like you can, I mean, yeah. I guess they, it's max, them. whatever it is. Uh, yeah. yeah you can go right. watch it on there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everything is, they're all making deals, right? The fact that WWE, decided to make a streaming deal that was not on their own network should tell you and i know yes they had the peacock thing but that came baked in with a deal that they already had so you have something where they're like we're gonna go in and go to netflix of all places which is gonna yeah. ramp things up uh, I, I mean that should tell you all you need to know because they're a legacy right. we've had deals with tv forever type company right <laughs> so uh, i gotta ask you something I just had this revelation about this whole back and forth between these two companies. Well, one company mm -hmm. now. Um, so the last project that Disney plus put on Hulu was <laughs> echo. So like, they were like, Oh, take this. Like they just slumped. Mm -hmm. Is that the last one that'll bridge the gap the other way? It might velvet Elvis. How's it That's going? Workaholic kind of hilarious. Uh, so I've heard people say this as well, where now you start to wonder, and Workaholic saying, I keep hearing Disney Plus shows echo Indiana Jones being advertised as coming to Hulu on my streaming music sites. I kind of wonder if Disney is doing that thing where they are kind of maybe service dumping to try and build a little bit more viewership because they are allowed to claim those numbers on they Hulu are. as numbers of Disney Plus to kind of boost it up. That's not something they that they haven't yeah. done before. Right. I really... I really want something to happen that requires these companies to be transparent about what a view is and there be a universal standard. I would give anything for all these companies to be held to the same standard. Mm -hmm. Like that would be because you just, because they're going to, okay. Uh, X-Men 97 there's claiming yes. that the viewership is incredible. And I think it's probably really good. I I'm, I'm not doubting it at all, but the numbers are different every time you read from whoever you read them from. And it's like, that's true. Okay. Well, 
like 4 million, if it's 4.7 million, that's a, that's reasonable. That's great. The inflation of it is what I question. 4.7 would be a huge win. That's better than Loki. Like that's, that's, that's yeah, not bad at is. all. Um, I, yeah. Uh, Brock Sampson, I, or Sir Grizzle saying, so sports on streaming services is the new grip. It absolutely is, especially when you, you talk that. about anything, anything right. NFL related. I mean, NFL is taking these companies to the cleaners with some of the yeah. stuff that they're getting them to pay out. It's insane. Like, uh, go look at their, yeah. their uh, Amazon deal. And right. the fact that Apple's like, well, we kind of want to get into it, too. The fact that Netflix is like, well, we'd be interested if we can work. Some and, and it's insane. It's insane. But yeah. Brock Samson, I, with the, so where is everybody in here getting their sports that they aren't sub to ESPN? ESPN has taken to YouTube so much. It's not uncommon now for them to put most of first take on there. Pat McAfee's already on YouTube. He's been, and I think they want to do the Pat McAfee model where you're on YouTube the whole time, but you can also be on ESPN. I think that was the plan and why they are kind of, some people might even say putting up with him because apparently there are people at ESPN that don't like him. But I think that's where they're trying to go with that, where it's like, mm -hmm you know what let's give people multiple ways because it's right. not working on espn yes they, they will always have their gyms and bakeries and and doctor's offices and all of that but i do wonder i do wonder what that's going to look like as youtube starts to get more adopted into other things it's you know yeah it wouldn't be uncommon oh, it wouldn't be and i make no doubt about it that there's things changing in this realm where in five years, we might look back and be like, wow, do you remember whenever it was so divided? Because like the Fox mm -hmm. Warner Brothers ESPN thing is going to be one app, but they split the money. It, the yeah. consolidation is going to happen. It has to. They split them. They won't split these views, though. Like Tim's saying here, no. it would be great if the metric for what counts as a view makes sense when they counted two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. You remember when they used to count that? Like this counting the two Ridiculous. seconds. And Twitter and, still does that, by the way. Like yeah. if you scroll past the video on Twitter, it counts. Like yeah. I want to believe that things are changing at Twitter, but in my opinion, it's getting dumber. Like them saying, because Disney used that. They were like, oh, the Deadpool trailer on Twitter was, was viewed like 45 million times in the first hour. Yeah. What's the view? What's a view? What is a view, right? Like, like you have to start. You remember when Netflix kind of got exposed for that, when they would just start? playing the thing after it was over and they counted as if you, yep. whether you clicked it or good. not. <laughs> and they got rid yeah, of their star true. system. So you couldn't downvote things. You, yeah. yeah. Nerdy film girl saying, I can't believe they put poor things on Disney plus. Yeah. And that's the thing, but nerdy film girl, as you know, when that Oscar season hits all of these companies, all of them, I saw um, American fiction was all over Amazon. Like you can't, you can't actually watch it on Amazon, but Amazon was promoting like, promoting it like crazy and so you have all these things oppenheimer had come out max was promoting that like they were just promoting whatever they could that was oscar bait because hey come watch these movies before you know and so that makes yeah. sense it makes sense poor things though does seem a little bit weird if you know the poor things movie and if you right. haven't go check out the poor things panel discussion on nerdy film ghost channel uh but going into this hulu a 16 did you know it was 16 years old yeah, isn't that crazy? I know someone that's had it since like it was originally like like an orridge subscriber yeah. to Hulu because they loved it. And I was like, what are you talking about, Hulu? And they've always had it. Like I would have said 10, but 16 years old. Yeah. Sheesh. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, 16 year I, I old app. <laughs> yeah. That's Gosh. So oh man. <laughs> like you ever just say something and you kind of like think about like the age? <laughs> You're just like, Jesus Christ. 16 God. years of Super Pad Hulu. That's crazy. Yeah. That is legitimately crazy. Um, but it runs on a very different technological platform than the four-year-old Disney Plus. Look at yeah. the they were behind the the they were super behind the eight ball. Like <laughs> they really were. They really were. That's crazy. 16 years to four years of Disney, Disney being the billion dollar empire that it is. That's insane. <laughs> That's yeah. Wow. But one of the big things from a technological point that they have to do is Disney has to recode or re-encode all of the Hulu video files to work on Disney Plus, which it would have done in a relatively straightforward way. But instead, the company decided to use the opportunity to roll out a single content library system for everything everywhere. Makes sense. That, that makes yeah. complete sense. It takes a little bit of time, but it does make sense. 
But that's the thing. A lot right. of those 100,000 assets, by the way, aren't video files. They are artwork and things like that. They're marketing pieces. They're things, all of that stuff. And that's where it starts to get like, oh, okay, so what are you doing really? That's where we start to get into that. Yeah. And speaking of getting into stuff, uh, Kalichi, oh. appreciate you. As always, Gifted 5 John Automates memberships. I, if you haven't heard, I have been very busy with the work schedule, but some of my main focuses coming up will be members-only videos. I do believe in doing specific videos just for members, as well as I will be turning on the early access to videos that do go out to the public. So look for those in the future. But Kalichi, I thank you for that. Here it is, man. I'm Hulu and Disney. We, we've been talking about it. Here it is. Yep. That's that's what it is. I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm I hate to it. say it, it. It won't hurt them. I think this helps them if it uh, rolls out right. I mean, I don't think it hurts the Disney Plus brand. Uh, whether it actually boosts it or not, I don't know. But it doesn't I'll it. tell you. I'll tell you something that will hurt Disney. The, the brand of Disney if they don't do yeah, this correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a mistake. This is a massive, huge... Oh, I mean, we've been saying this for a year. This is horrifically uh, bad this idea of trying to do this without him yeah wait 30 years and do this or 20 more years okay. i don't know okay in what way all the stuff we've talked about where it has been mad max barely works without mad max John Wick doesn't really work without John Wick. Uh, you can make that case for a lot of things. The Matrix doesn't really work without Neo unless you're trying to do like there's a lot of different things you can make the case for. I don't think there is a bigger case you can make than a Pirates movie without. This is akin to doing Harry Potter without Harry Potter. Like, yeah, Jack Sparrow is yeah. bigger than the pirates brand and i know they don't want that to be a the million case, percent but... bigger yeah and post trial this is asking for it if you do this without johnny depp you are asking for people to actively root against the movie and actively boycott like this would cause a boycott 100 percent. this would cause a boycott it would like you think about this look at the title this is inverse. Look at the title. After three, <laughs> not one, but two, but three, three failed attempts, Pirates of the Caribbean is getting yet another reboot. Why? Yeah. Because everybody keeps saying no. They start off, but they say, yeah, oh, maybe a good They're idea. Like, and then people tell them, no, this isn't a good idea. Yeah. I think someone talked to Margot Robbie and was like, this could be your career. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Are, are she, you really to roll your whole career on this? Like, she claims now she claims that oh it just yeah. kind of fell apart and things like that i somebody got to her there's this yeah no somebody way. was like are you see are you sure are you do you see this johnny depp trial is the most viewed thing in human history pretty much at this point are you sure you want to risk yeah it? <laughs> yeah it it doesn't it does not work it does not work uh where is it i saw a cryptic didn't they already try this out johnny and fail uh they didn't he wasn't he was in that last movie right yeah yeah he's he in it they just did the pre part. right they've they've just done pre-production and it's gotten canceled on several films but uh no yeah. movie without him yet and they would find out real quick what that's like uh but like nerdy film where says like no pirates yeah. without johnny De like the actor I, there's a level of friendship and camaraderie i think that also comes into play here I don't think anybody wants to even attempt to take the spot. Yeah. Why? I, you talk about a brand that doesn't understand, and maybe they can't do it. Actually, I, I would argue this. There's a price that they could get Johnny Depp for one last Pirates of the Caribbean movie. They're not willing to admit defeat, though. Disney would right. be admitting openly that they were wrong. Pockets. What was yeah, it? <laughs> because uh, after removing him, I bet his price tag's probably like, yeah, 200 million. What, what, what you, I mean, just cash. Oh. Oh, think about this. Think about this. L allow me to pull this up if I can, because this is how foolish this is. This is how foolish this is. Now, would you look at that? <laughs> change, <laughs> change that org. Rarely, when it comes to like specific things from like an actor standpoint and stuff like that, you uh. generally don't get that many people for stuff like that. 
I think this one might be the biggest in terms of like film and things. Almost a, like literally almost a million signatures. That's more people than watch Miss Marvel, than watch She Hulk. Yeah. That is more people on a website signing a thing, not to mention the millions of normal people that are aware of that situation. Yeah. That's it's and it goes into it. Tim saying Jack Sparrow is Pirates of the Caribbean. Shintok 17. There is no Pirates of the Caribbean without that. He is too loved. Kim, him specifically is too loved. It doesn't, it doesn't work without him. It just doesn't. Yeah. Um, a nerdy film girl talking about Margot Roby. I, I think she needs to sign a deal like Tom Cruise and Timothy Shalom may have. Like this whole I wouldn't be surprised at all if she gets on board with them too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't either. And and that's the thing. And here's another thing that I'm interested in seeing. Uh Tim saying there was all the all women's pirates movie, but when uh, but then what were the other two? I don't know if the all women's type thing is going to work anymore. Because and I and allow me to give you a couple of examples here. Oceans eight. Was the all female Oceans yeah. Eleven movie that okay didn't do well, right? The Marvels didn't do well. Uh, obviously, Madam Web did not do well. Yeah. And there's other movies like that. The the all female Ghostbusters didn't do well, right? But each one of those movies had very talented actresses in them. Every single Especially one of those Oceans. movies had talent. Exactly. Or whatever. So, <laughs> so you go, okay, so you have talented, you're getting talented people for these all-female movies, and yet they are still turning out to be trash, essentially. Why? Because the stories are bad, and you're not focusing on the story at, at that point. You're focusing on the message at that point. You care more about making everybody know that this is an all-female version of this instead of making a good story for these women. And now these women end up having to deal with all the garbage of people being like, well, this movie stinks. And a lot of times they will agree with you. They'll be like, eh, yeah, it kind of does. Get yeah. ask any of the Ghostbusters women to ask to talk about ghosts. They won't. They won't. <laughs> they, no, they won't. they won't even talk about the movie. No. All of the people right now from Madam Web are dissing Madam Web. Sydney oh, Sweeney Sydney got out. He's building just... an her last interview, she's building an empire of fans just by bashing how bad it is. And when her own you know, she she had her own little hardcore group of fans there that were trying to be like, no, it's not that bad. And she's like, no, she even doubled down on them, which was great because like, yeah. that's the only way to break free of it. And so you find stuff like that and you realize like, that's not even fair to them. And so then you get a movie like Barbie that comes out. Now that Barbie is a heavy female led woman led movie, right? But there's still men in it. There's still a major portion of it. It's just, they're just not the focus. That probably should be where you try to go. I don't think the whole like everybody in the cast or most of the, I don't know if that works anymore. I I, I don't right. I don't know if it worked to begin with. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I, like the best case scenario is you make a movie where people can't tell. Like it's just a normal blended group of yeah. people that are like I don't know cast for like talent and actors and story and not anything else back here that gets you a tax credit in certain states i don't know like yeah it just it just isn't i just don't know if that's a smart thing and again i think when you do stuff like that and i think madam webb is one of the biggest examples when you do stuff like that i think other women in the industry go yeah screw this right why why would i do it All right so when you get margot robbie and and uh and ao uh Edaberry, like mm -hmm. when you get them to being rumored to become the next lead of a pirates movie, they probably are looking at the stuff like that. And they're probably looking at all the stuff that Johnny Depp's gone through and they're going, no, why, why mm -hmm. would I do it? Is the right. paycheck really worth it? We got money. It's fine. Well, I'm yeah. At a project. certain point, like some of these actors, like it can't be that motivation. It's like, and, and if they're really motivated by money, movies won't get you there anyway. You're not going to get yes. Ryan Reynolds movies from money from movies. It's through businesses. That's the only way you're getting that money. Agreed. And so when so Jerry Bruckheimer was asked about this, obviously, Jerry Bruckheimer being the big producer, and he said one line that automatically made me go, oh, you're going to you're going to screw it up regardless. This line here, we are going to reboot Pirates, he said, so that it's easier to put together because you don't have to wait for certain actors. You know, another movie that did that 
a couple of years back. We like to call that movie the movie we don't like to acknowledge as Matrix fans, but have to say it actually was made, Resurrections, because that's what Warner Brothers did. They said, yep. eh, we're going we're gonna to do it. Either you do it or we're going to do it. That's right. basically and fans showed what them they told it. Exactly yeah. what it meant. Like the trailer didn't trick anyone. The box office was very clear cut. Like, nope. You could even bring back Neo and all this stuff. Nope. Yeah. So it's like, all right. And so obviously uh, Lana Wachowski was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm just going to do it my own self. But the fact that you just, you just, <laughs> this is a comment that makes me feel like, Jerry, come on now. You've been in yeah. the industry. You know this doesn't work without Jerry. Okay, Jerry Bruckheimer, you, we have a Bad Boys movie coming out. Does Bad Boys work without Will Smith and Martin no, Lawrence? Zero percent. I don't even know if it works anymore, but if, if it does, it's because of them, not any other reason. Does Bad Boys even work if one of them is there and the other one's missing? No. no. Jerry, you know this. So why would you then be like, oh, yeah, we're, we're not going to. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, Come on. do Fast and Furious without Ben Diesel and find out what it's like. Yeah, like do stuff like that. They, yeah. they and they did. They did Tokyo Drift, and even then, yeah. Vin Diesel showed up at the end. <laughs> even so then, plenty. and the money of it was still bad. Like, yeah. uh, it's tough. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Real chat with another ten dollars super chat. Appreciate you as always. There was only one fight. There was only one fight scene in Endgame that ruined the experience because of the same thing. Very. Very right. true. When they, they did it the right entire in Infinity battle. War. Yeah. Like in exactly. Infinity War, you have a great example of what, like a natural organic thing that gets a hyped moment between characters like that. It, I can't believe that they did yeah. that in Endgame the way they did. You could have done it in Endgame and, and it yeah. would, nobody would have thought any of the wiser and it would have been a cool. When Okoye in Infinity War is like man they're fighting and she's fighting with uh with black widow and everything like and then what happens uh scarlet witch comes out and does all that and she makes that funny joke of like why was she up there the whole time yeah like, that's a good that's a good scene yeah <laughs> that's yeah. a good scene quality writing in game they were like hey let's get real dumb let's what, what was this it? i got um i got her back or something like that i think that was like the, the yeah the line. i I don't know. And the, and the, and the worst part about that scene and reformed. yeah, the separated army. And so, like, how did they even like get? Did, if you look at you the scenes, how did they even get together? They, and they <laughs> messed up because they were already doing the right thing. You know, they were doing the handoff thing. When Peter got tackled, you could have had one of them pick it up. She gets taken down. Yes. Then another one. You could have continued the same thing and pulled it off organically, and it not been a picture. But you wanted your picture. Yeah. Even though you could have gotten the same thing without yeah. it being, and this, it's and why in game is garbage compared to Infinity War. It's garbage compared to Winter Soldier. We just have a soft spot for Tony Stark and how he went out and Iron Man's legacy and Captain America. But in game has so many things like that that are, if you compare it to Infinity War, it's garbage. Like, like, it, I, oh yeah, well, com I, yeah, comparatively, yeah. It's right. I've always believed. I think a lot of people believe Infinity War to be the better. Right. Uh, this movie. is a. a uh, a new hope going to empire strikes back. Like this isn't right. where they went from. Wow. To, Oh my gosh. Like it was right. Peak, and we have never been back. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, mindless me, by the way. Um, I did see that and we're going to get into that. We'll get into that at the end because that's, <laughs> that's a different thing. We're going to get into that though, for sure. So, uh, mindless me, thank you for being a member as well. And, Here's the thing that's also very interesting. Uh, Shintok kind of making a good point. What they don't understand is that all women movies don't get women to watch. Just like men go to movies for female actresses, women do the same for male actors. I've seen movies. We've all seen movies with male actors who literally make specific scenes that are made for female audiences. Yeah. So when a so when you have a, a all woman woman led movie, not woman led, an all women movie, right? And right. you have that happen, yeah. and it becomes a okay. Well, who is this for? Because you're not putting in anything that is going to draw guys in, but you're also not doing anything for the female audience other than saying, "Hey, look, everybody's female." Well, that's not going to do it. That that doesn't no, work, it, uh, and. 
it's this all relies on the idea that the audiences are stupid and don't know better. That's never been true. Like, like that's I've yeah. never seen an example of audiences being off like by a wide margin on a movie in terms of money. I'm not talking about reviews mm -hmm. and what you like, but when it comes to a movie making money, it's very rare where they get it wrong. Like I, yeah. I that metric is pretty solid to, to rely on. I've never been tricked uh, by anything. Agreed. G Gaba and, and real Chad both saying Thor one. If you go back and look at Thor one's marketing, the way they ran their trailers and had their posters, As they should. <laughs> they knew what they As were doing. They should. <laughs> yes. It was oh, heavily yeah. for, for women. And real Chad kind of added in here, women seem to be sick of the pandering, which they very much are. And that's why none of these films got a big female following. They want great characters, not a pen. It's thrown at. Here's the thing. More men saw the Marvels. More men yeah. saw Madam Web. It wasn't even close. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't, and, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And, and we don't mind, Lee. There were, I don't understand the narrative of you don't like, like, oh, the people like you just don't like lead characters that are women. What? Where? It doesn't work. Yeah. You think I would prefer, like, you think I don't want to, what, where, where in my history of spending money have you determined that? Yeah. Never... Also, <laughs> also, if you followed Bonebridger or I for any type of while, if you haven't, you'll, you'll learn that Bonebridger very much loves the Alien franchise with Ripley. And I very much love Atomic Blonde with Charlie Star. Yeah. <laughs> like, those are, the, it, 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 I, <laughs> like, the thing that made me fall in love with the Marvel live action adaptations is avengers one scarlett johansson yeah. black widow and hulk that scene the first scene is for me that's what made me love it because it was so real because she was afraid and that yeah, made me racing. look at hulk differently i was like what do you like her character's known as being this like doesn't show emotion she's about to cry in that scene yeah. where she's holding like but no but but see, they even turn on people like Scarlett Johansson because of the way she looks. Oh, it's too, you know, can't be like makes no showing sense. her be attractive. Makes you know, makes not no sense. Uh, uh, also, Lloyd Parsons wanted to add this in here. Glad you could show up. Late Night with the Devil. Have you seen that yet? I've heard that movie is great. I'm too scared. I'm straight up scared. <laughs> I okay. That guy already terrifies me. And he super terrifies me in the trailer for that movie. And the Dirty Film Girl saw it, and she was like, it was really good, but it didn't really scare me. Yes. Okay, so it's too scary for me then. It's definitely too scary for me. Yeah, I'm, and I'm sure Nerdy Film Girl will also bring it up. But real quick, I mean, it's gotten some really, really good, really, really good uh, word of mouth. Like, extremely good. And I like seeing stuff like this. And to be honest... We kind of talked about it earlier in the year. We knew these kinds of movies would be the things that kind of took over. Because right now, has any what's the big movie that anyone's really been talking about that's not Dune? We're hearing well, more see, about like, like the right. smaller, you know, uh, because like uh, Ghostbusters wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't it Frozen Empire? No. We knew that no. one, but it definitely wasn't it. It, it, it just it just wasn't, and. Uh, <laughs> Hey, listen, I I just think that is craziness that they, you know, I, I and you know, what? I'm glad that movies like this are kind of taking center stage over the franchise. Like we need to keep going. We need to keep going. We need to keep going. That's just not good. It, it doesn't really do anything for anybody. And honestly, it doesn't need to yeah. continue. We don't need Ghostbusters anymore. We really don't. We really don't. Right. Uh I don't want to ever see a, a movie like that just turn into an ensemble with 30 characters. That's just a money grab. Like if mm. they had done it in a way where like, sure. I mean, I, that'd been fine, but no, yep. I, you know, what movie really is a test for me of what the way this year could go is this Godzilla mm. King Kong, because I keep hearing from people online that are fans of the monster verse, that this movie is going to make more than the last one without the star power. The last one had, and I hope they're right because Millie Bobby Brown's not in it. Sarsgaard's not in it. The budget depends cheaper. on depends on how much monster, yeah. like how much kaiju are in it. Yeah, like are I you really gonna let them? You know. Yeah. So that's. that's I hope it does. That, but uh, I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet yeah. it does. I. I. I like everyone I've talked to that's not a monster verse fan is not seeing this one unless they're going yeah. in a group for the fun of it because this trailer 
did push silly to them. I will go see it. I'm excited. It'll be fun. But mm-hmm. to say this is going to make more money than the last one, that's that's a, it's a new year. It's a new era. That's a reach. The last one is good. Think so. Like, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, real chat in here saying I'm a huge fan of the first female led in an action movie ever, oh, referencing yeah. the Jennifer Lawrence. I do uh, love the Hunger Games, the <laughs> and she is the, the greatest Games. hero of our time. You know, but look at look at Hunger Games last year. Like, did well, but came and went. Wasn't like a big fanfare thing. It, it, it got its time. Did more money than I think a lot of people thought it was going to do. But it just it came and it went because it just franchises. I don't know if they really, really have the kind of legs and staying power that they did, especially if the stories are not going to be good. And there is a new franchise that I don't think should be your franchise. And that's this. That's The Last of Us. Yeah. Now. Okay. You and me said this <laughs> last year, and I felt like we couldn't say it. Okay. As you rewind the clock, me and John were very outspoken about The Last of Us was not what everyone said. Like, if you played the games, if you're a fan of those things, it's not. But we've questioned season two for a long time, and people are like, oh, it's going to be fine. How? How is it going to be fine? Now, here's the thing. I... And we're not going to spoil it. If if you haven't played the game, we're not going to spoil it. But yeah, uh, no, there, there is, well, don't look at the chat, I guess. But (laughs) I, we're just hanging out here. We're just going to go play some mini golf. Everyone's fine. Pedro's going to be fine. Play play a little golf. Don't need to worry about it. Uh, Here's the thing. Last year, we were talking about the fact. Now, I, I am of the belief that I think Last of Us is great but I also think it's overrated and I think it's overrated for a variety of reasons. I think they did not take the tension that they could have had very seriously. I think they cheapened out on the monsters. The fact that the last or uh, that the uh, walking dead has more threats than the last of us does is kind of ridiculous considering the walking dead is over 10 years old. Like it was kind of, it was that ridiculous and that crazy, but it was an achievement in terms of there were some great cinematography type filmmaking that was going on with it and so you got to give all the credit there but the guy who brought people in was pedro because this was pedro at the height of his powers at the height of his career when you have something like that and now it's kind of like oh but by the way he's not gonna really be in season two right and and it matters for this it absolutely matters because who are they who's gonna lead the show when he's not in it? it we know what two characters are and if you think Seven million people are gonna and, and hold on. We know this. John and me already talked about this last year. This show had seven million viewers once, and then mm-hmm. it went and then, down yeah, it kind of went down. bad. This show, when that happens, will go down to a million viewers, and Warner Brothers will not renew a third season at that. That, that, that will be too low. <laughs> hey, listen, Pedro Fasco, wait on the star. No way they glenn you. Ah. Yeah. You see, aren't you in Fantastic about, Four though? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, here's the thing about Glenn. When Glenn happened, Glenn, the, a lot of fans left off of that. Now take that and make it your main star, who people came for. I just don't see it. I, I like, don't see it. They have to change how it happens. I, I, I'm adamant on this. If they don't change the how it goes down, they will lose tremendous because. The people that like this show didn't play the game and they will not tolerate this. This is not going to be something they're okay with because they're not ready for this. This is like, also it's stupid. Just it, the story of this season, uh, game two is stupid. The gameplay, sure. Well, that's the story really dumb. That's the fear. And Shintok uh, 17 kind of goes into a little bit of the fear. The Last of Us was overrated. I watched it and felt it needed more action. We all did. The infected weren't even shown much. And that was the thing. The infected were not so much. When they did have the infected on, it was good. There were great episodes. The second yep. episode in particular is really good. And what was it? I think the sixth episode where where uh, yeah, like they're fighting well, out of the, the end, when they, they come that. out of the ground. Yeah, but you have well, a situation where it's like that works, but you didn't do oh. much with that, and you barely did enough with the mercenaries. Yeah. So if it's not about the tension, then what is the show about? 
that's where it kind of gets like, oh, I don't know. Because if he's not there, and this was my, this is where I thought I was, and I've said earlier in the show that I thought I was wrong on the specific thing. Here's what I thought I was, here's what I think I'm wrong about. I told Bone Bridger, a nerdy film girl on one of the ISO cubes that he would be in the entire season. He would just be shown in like images and montages and things like that. And I still kind of think that. But then you hear about his film schedule and how there wasn't that much put into it. And now I'm, I'm not even sure that's going to happen. I think he has his time right at the beginning. And then the show goes into a completely different direction. But that completely different direction. At this point, the, the show is literally going to do the exact same thing the games did. It's literally going to yeah. do the exact same thing. I think the director is going to be overconfident and say i can pull this off in episode one and people will stick around oh no 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 that would be a bad could you imagine? episode one could you imagine uh -huh. the end of episode one being this it because shouldn't be there should no, be at least shouldn't. two to three it should be it should not be one even if they rush it but last season they rushed hardcore like the like uh, all the time it was way off what we thought it would be yeah and so now I'm kind of like, all right, fine. Even if you do do it, are you actually going to let her uh, be violent the way she is in the game? Are you going to okay. actually allow her to be as seriously violent? Or, or is she, you know, like, I don't know. I got you. I, I just... Opening scene for the whole season is just that happening. And then it flashes back to show how it leads to it. <laughs> that might be, that might be the better option though. Honestly, like, I know that's a joke, but like, that could be, but he's not in it enough so that, you know, that's, I just don't want, Ellie gets really violent. So if you're going to let her get violent, well, obviously there's a cause and an effect. You need to have the cause happen for her to get really violent, which is obviously the stuff that happens to Joel, as well as the stuff that she deals with, as well as dealing with the infected. But if you already showcased that you didn't really have that much affected, and it seems like based off of budget stuff that they're not going to have it that much this season too, then that means you're going to focus very, very heavily on this, the relationship drama aspect of it. And at that point, that's a different show. The same way the game was a bit of a different game. Uh, <laughs> I just, I don't, I, I'd rather watch, I'd rather watch She-Hulk and Velma season two. I, I, because this, there's no way they do this in a way I, I want them to change things, but they're not going to change things. They're going to lean into what was in the second game and they're going to really lean yeah. into it for, for the show. Well, and, and we'll get into that. Just mindless me. He didn't have much time because Pedro's a professional one take. So it didn't take much to get through his scenes, which honestly I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't even be surprised. Uh, Tim with a good point here. Amazing. was trying to recreate what he did with Chernobyl with Chernobyl. Uh, this was a completely more action oriented than the historical Trump. That, yeah. Uh, Chernobyl actually was fantastic. That was an incredible story. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, but the thing that I think makes that show was the impending doom of the reactor. The thing that makes The Last of Us is the like, man, these things are really, really coming after us. Like, we are in a world without hope. And, but, Here's another thing that I think was also pretty bad when it came to The Last of Us. Remember how we were watching the episodes and then like sometimes episodes would go on for like a reasonable amount of time. And then other times they would just cut off. You'd be like, mm -hmm. like what's what isn't one of their shortest episodes like 30 minutes or 20. Right. There's no balance like, to anything anymore. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing makes sense anymore. I mean, There's they were no moving uniform. through things. Uh, yeah. Oh, now, on a, on a genius side, that show was cheaper than it should have been. They they definitely made it cheaper than it should have been. Well, well yeah, but the, I mean, they didn't have much. They didn't get any infected it, in it. It should be cheap, right? You're not going to have it. Should be. It's 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 a mistake to do that. But at the same time, like Warner Brothers clearly doing. Yeah, I, I listen, John. All I need to know is this: is can we opening scene of season two, Pedro? <laughs> the event happens in the background. Can we have Conor McGregor show up as a character and just wreck park like he does in Roadhouse where he doesn't actually park and he just wrecks into things? Hey, listen, listen. Conor McGregor's, even though that acting job was terrible, he is being praised. 
That's all I, I'm going to say. I, I'll say That's... this. The concept of his character not parking and just wrecking every time is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. The more I think about it, I just want to watch that movie <laughs> where Conor McGregor attempts to live a life, but he doesn't park. He just wrecks every time. Ridiculous. Um, going to Gabo here. Uh, have you seen the three body problem? I have not. Bumberger, have you seen three body problem? I've only watched uh, halfway through the first episode. I'm going to give it a try later. So I, I'm, I'm worried that knowledge of the book is a problem with this show. Mm. Uh, That's I don't I'm know. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I may need to learn more before I watch it. I, I have never, I have not watched the series. I have not read the books. I am interested in this series just because that's the kind of sci-fi that I've always been interested in to sure. begin with. I've heard varying degrees of stuff. Obviously, I think it's one of those where you just have to, you know, check it out for yourself as you should with a lot, right. like pretty much most things. But uh, I am curious because I have heard a number of people go, yeah, this is a very different thing because what they're doing with the book is very hard to put into live action and so they had to change quite a bit around that's what i'm hearing all right okay. i only know enough about the book to know that i don't know how you make a show about it like that like that's like fair. it's one of those that i'm like how do you even you know uh gabo kind of adding in don't read the books watch the show first which honestly that's what's help. gonna happen for me <laughs> so yeah yeah that's that's fair that's fair yeah. uh brock sam's not also oh, yeah. very much Always. excited for the uh, you never know season. what you're gonna get you never know yeah. what you're going to get. Good, bad, interesting, boring. It's everything's different. What do you, real quick, what do you think is going to happen with that? Like, we've explored a lot of the stuff, like, a lot of the stuff that happened in last season, we're actually kind of getting into in today's real life world. Yeah. What do you think they go I bet into? They, I bet they have a heavy mandate to do political and AI related things. I bet that's the mm. only thing Netflix really wanted was we want more AI tech based stuff. Cause that, that does really well. I know those episodes really go crazy and then political yeah. stuff because of what's happening in the world. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I did say we would go back and I do actually mean it. Mindless meat mentioning that, uh, the article claiming uh, Final Fantasy VII's Barrett is comic relief only. Now, I did see this article. I am assuming you're, we're talking about the same article. And this was the article I saw. So, mindless me, if this isn't the article, please let me know. But I think this was the actual article. Uh, and <laughs> this was just kind of, like, interesting. Because um, technically... Technically, this article is kind of stupid, and I will say why. As far as I'm concerned, there's only two, three really, but like two real prominent black characters within Final Fantasy uh, as like a series. Like there's like other side mm -hmm. ones that you could probably point to, but these are the two ones. Here's the thing that I don't really understand. It's time for Final Fantasy to introduce a new type of Black protagonist, one who defies stereotypical portrayals. Now, allow me to just kind of read how this kind of goes into it. Within the original game, I found Barrett to be quite hilarious and a great counterpart to the stoic cloud. That was what he was put there for. The actual creator said that. Okay. While Cloud spent most of his earlier screen time keeping his feelings on the inside and being an unreliable narrator, Barrett spent time calling Cloud out on his nonsense. Again, that's what Barrett was put there for. He acted as a loud, brash reminder that the world was dying and Cloud and, Cloud and the gang needed to get their act together on things that were going from, to go from bad to worse. That's what Barrett was put there for. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, now Saz, Saz him, he was comedy relief. But let's be honest, mm. people didn't really care for Final Fantasy uh, 13 anyway. So who cares? Right. But, but Barrett, Barrett has very extremely serious situations, like really serious stuff with his daughter, extremely serious situations with how he's trying to grow as a as a person. Uh, extremely mm. situ like serious situations in terms of how he's trying to protect his friend. So I'm I always kind of see stuff like this, and it's like. Okay, so he has specific things that you call out, specific scenes, but that doesn't mean that's him entirely. And when I see articles like this, you always kind of go, ugh, okay, 
<laughs> like you know, it makes you think: Is this AI? Is this an AI written? <laughs> and honestly, Saz. He even has some extremely serious scenes. If we really like were to like dive into it, obviously Final Fantasy is a is a long game, but he has some really extreme serious situations too because his son in the game, he, he has a son in the game, and his son is going through some stuff. And I won't spoil it for people who haven't played it, but there's a lot of things going on where his comedy relief is actually pain. And so when you when you see articles like this, you go, Do you actually know, or are you just saying things? Uh, gaming journalism is is a remarkable thing. It's a it's a it's not great. It's not great. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, cryptic kind of have to agree. You have to what? Like, do these people? Are you have you actually played the game? And if you played the game, have you actually like? Did you actually just like? Well, no. The, the answer is you haven't played the game because you would know. <laughs> right. You've seen scenes. You, you know. You watch the cutscenes. And, and of course. Yeah, and of course the cutscenes are going to show Barrett at his craziest because, yeah, why wouldn't you? That's the character. So people are going to remember what the character was like. And so you want to see the exaggerated part. But that's just, it's not, it's not real. It's its not, I don't know. Hunter, we're having a good good evening. Uh, not feeling well. Hey, it'll still be up there for replay. I do hope that you feel better. So trust me on that. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Now, Vernon, I will agree. Uh, if you play like Gears 3, Cole, Cole and Gears is an absolute stereotype. That I, I will absolutely agree with. Mm -hmm. Yes. Final Fantasy, no. I it's just come on, you're reaching. And then you see stuff like that and you start to say, why is everybody just reaching for everything? Right. Like, you know, What's the it's point? it's what is the point? But the point is obvious. The point is we need clicks, right? Clicks. And so when you see stuff, when you see stuff like this. And you get the whole like, oh, well, it's made sci-fi safe for black nerds. How? We need How? clicks. Yeah. We clicks. need clicks. Speaking of which, and I'm going to, we, we, we're going to end on this, but I, I have to get into this real quick. One of the big issues when it comes to black diversity and things like that into these, I've always found something to be interesting. When they always try to promote black diversity, it's usually somebody who looks like this. And when I say looks like this, and I don't mean to get into a whole colorism thing because that, you know, that's a problem by itself. But when I get into stuff like this, they love black women who look like her. Why? Because she's not just black. She's also Danish. They like, like, you see a lot of the other, like, um, oh, who's the other one? Who's the other one from Cloverfield? You, the, the Cloverfield Paradox. Oh, um, she, she's, I can't think she's been in name. a lot of stuff. Um, Gugu, uh, and Loki too. Gugu Mathu Raw, right? Mm -hmm. She, she's our, our Ravona, uh, in Loki. They like her, she's not, she's also mixed. Like, they love getting the mixed women and say, oh, diversity. And it's like, hmm, I don't know. I, I You see stuff like that and you just kind of go like, all right, so what are you really fighting for when you see stuff like that? Because realistically, the, the, she should be more so fighting for it than she should. Not saying that yeah. nobody should be fighting for it, but I always, you just always happen to notice that whenever it's like, yeah, we're fighting for it, it's kind of like, I don't know. It just... Eh. I, it it kind of rubs you the wrong way because they will promote her when she complains about it, but they won't promote her when she complains about it. <laughs> I'm just... if, John, if an apocalyptic scenario happens because of this show, like, like this show comes out in the next day, like aliens invade or something. We deserved it. We deserved it. It's I'm just saying it's time. It, it's, it's weird. And it, and it goes into to the things where you're like, all right, so when, because again, she complains about marketing or she, she complains about uh, the marketing and the, the uh, roles and things like that. And she's everywhere. Yeah. She's everywhere. Yeah. She's everywhere. But like, let somebody who is as dark skinned as say Viola Davis, you won't find that same kind of coverage. Well, because Viola she Davis did she, say it. The, yeah. And she's saying she designed this show around this actress, but why? Well, there's right. other factors there. 
that yes. are clearly why she was chosen. And is this I, I just, we are? I, I, I've always, like, it's tough because you see stuff like that. And so again, you, you have stuff like the Barrett thing and it's like, man, you, people just need to find uh, something to, to pull from when there's nothing to really pull from. And so you see this and you go, okay, there, you definitely didn't play the game. But when you see something like this and you go, so what's the acolyte about? And everything is about, well, uh, we have a mandala, a mandala, a gay, non-binary, black, intersectional feminist. That's a heavy wordplay. And, you know, joined by Queen and Slim star Jody Turner-Smith, who is also black. That's it. That's all she's got. And then you got South Korean and you got Filipino, Chinese descent and Spanish born. And you got uh, black and gay and you got gay and married to showrunner Leslie Head. And you're like... But what about the show? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about like, hey, you're an actor and you've been in this before. You studied here and you did this. And oh, you want to be in Star Wars because you loved Mace Windu like, and you loved seeing this. And nope, none yeah, of it's that. Like, it's kind of, you know, and it's weird. It's weird. And so then when we when we call out James Gunn for putting his son in everything, it's okay. But if we call out Leslie Headland for putting her her wife in things, all of a sudden. And uh, that's that's a problem. That's not good. That's not good. And therefore, yeah. when you have stuff like that happen and you start to see like, oh, OK, well, you know what? This is going to be something that needs to be very important to us. Well, then you get stuff like this where your ratio is that bad. So, and the comments are so good. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, you know, we can do those. On I, we'll do those on uh, ISO cubes. We'll go through the comments to get on ISO cubes. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's weird. So, <laughs> if this show is good, good, I will be honest about it, but I would be willing to bet a whole lot that this is a new era of bad for Star Wars, and it's bad in a, a new way. It's not Boba Fett bad, where it's like the story is stupid and they've made terrible choices. It's bad because it's not a show. It's it's someone who yeah. has an idea that they want to communicate with to you directly, and because you don't read their Twitter, they're going to just send it straight through the show to you. Also, Also, while we're back here, don't forget that nine point. That's a small number considering. Oh, pathetic for Star Wars. This is, but Star Wars is is not relevant anymore. No, like it's it, the only people <laughs> that are going to watch this are the people that want to that are that are, know how bad it's going to be. That's the only people that watch the show, other than like fifteen people that borrow a Disney Plus account from their parents because they don't have a real job. They just live on Twitter and care about whatever the trending thing is. Ugh, wild stuff. Wild stuff. But again. It's like you don't understand your brands. All these things coming out, they're just saying whatever, they're just doing whatever. But what about actually making the brand stay? What about having some lasting firepower, essentially? Like, how about you make sure that this can continue? There doesn't seem to be any want or belief that this thing that you have can continue. Because if you did, then you would actually care about putting out good stuff and good stories and making sure that it brings in as many people as you can instead of only trying to bring in one group, which has never made sense ever. Never. For anything. For uh, what? Like, what are they doing? Uh, crazy stuff. Bone Bridger, what do you got coming out for the rest of this week? Friday, ISO Cubes noon. Hope we see you all there. Noon. All right. And Bone Bridger and I, and Nerdy Film Girl, we are trying to figure out how we are going to work on this Rebel Moon watch party. Because once again, as Bone Bridger has said many times, you, you kind of don't want to watch it if you don't, if, if you are just going to be by yourself. <laughs> so, yeah. That, you know? If I'm like alone at 1 a.m. watching that show, it might get a little too grim. I, I can yeah. only eat so much McDonald's to cover up that sadness. <laughs> so we are going to be putting in some time to kind of see uh, how we can get that put together. That will most likely be, it might be a members only thing. I, I'm yeah, assuming that's gonna, probably going to be the... how we're doing it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
logistics uh logistics yeah we'll figure that out we will figure that out but anyway we appreciate everybody showing up here as always yeah. brand versus the man wednesdays at eight uh glad everybody could stop by we'll see you all on iso cubes and if you are having a good night try and refrain from going on the internet because honestly yeah. the news is just too ridiculous tonight it's too much just stay away from it Stay away from it all. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah.